This is my 24-year-old Range Rover P38, which was left abandoned here on the rural coast of West Island for over five years, and I'm bringing it back to its former glory, one video at a time. So the last time you guys saw me working on the Range Rover P38's cooling system, we thought we had it pretty much sorted. Uh, I changed that pipe at the back of the engine that was leaking, uh, we put fresh coolant in the system and it bled up nicely and seemed to be working okay. However, shortly after turning off the camera for that last video, I noticed this radiator was leaking. Um, somewhere down here, towards the middle part of the radiator, it's peeing out coolant when it's under pressure. So. Um, that's what that box is down there. If you guys can see it, we've got a fresh NRF radiator and also got a new um, viscous fan as well. So I'm pretty sure this guy is fairly well seized up or too stiff anyway. So we're gonna try and throw them in as quickly as possible. If I get a chance, I'm also gonna throw the new thermostat in there. And then hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, that will actually be the cooling system sorted on the Range Rover for, uh, for the final time. So let's give it a go. So the first task is going to be to get these radiator hoses off. On the P38 diesel, both the top and bottom hoses go to the top of the radiator, of course. And once that's done, the removable slam panel can be removed with the help of the little Ugga Dugga gun. And after removing the viscous fan, we can slide the cowl, fan and radiator up out of their respective homes. You guys might have noticed there's been a bit of a dry spell in terms of my video releases lately. The weather here in the west of Ireland has been absolutely atrocious for the last few weeks, and with barely a single dry Saturday for me to get Ew. out and film stuff for you guys. Well, that's not ideal for airflow. I've still got loads lined up, we've got to underseal the L322, and the pile of goodies waiting to be fitted to all three landies is getting dangerously tall. So bear with me, there'll be plenty of landy and rangy content coming over the next few weeks and months. So now the radiator pack is out of the way, or the radiator, you guys can see the other problem that I noticed after running the engine for a few hours in the last few videos. This brand new belt, which we fitted, has gone really loose all of a sudden, which is really, really strange. So this is a brand new belt, and, we, we, and we, at the same time, we rebuilt this tensioner because it broke off, if you guys remember. Um, and I'm pretty sure, looking at it, the tensioner's in the right place, as in the tensioner is in the fully tensioned position. Um, but I'll double check that. Um, but yeah, this is obviously no good. So let's do a bit of investigation. So if you guys can see this, but the tensioner is actually currently in the fully extended position. So this cylinder is fully extended, which should mean the belt is the tightest it can possibly be. So yeah, what it seems to me is this belt has stretched, um, which is surprising because I say it's brand new. And um, we'll confirm that when I get it out and we'll compare it to the new one that I've got to fit. Um, now the reason why it might have stretched, and I'm not sure about this, but basically this viscous fan, whenever I was revving the engine up, um, was really howling, like really, really loud. So that suggests the viscous fan was putting a much higher load on the belt than would normally be the case. So that being the case, let's get that belt off and then we'll have a look and see how much longer it is than standard, if any. Uh, this, which is the new one I fitted when I first started working on the cooling system, and this, which is a brand new one, are both pretty much the same length. Not much difference between them. And um, they're both 18, uh, 1,815 millimetres long, which is the correct one for this engine. But the one I just took off seemed way too long. It's loads of slack, even with the tensioner all the way up. So we're gonna have a look and see what's actually going on here. So after a few minutes poking around, I think I've found the issue. <laughs> it's not an issue with the tensioner itself. It's not an issue with the belt. The issue is the mounting point for the tensioner. It's completely loose. 
So the problem actually turned out to be something I caused, which is no surprise, we all make mistakes, but basically this bolt here, I'd forgotten to put back in. And this bolt basically is a big M10 long bolt that goes through this spring, which, which, which obviously moves the tensioner through the bracket itself and then goes into the, uh, the front timing case there. So that is what was causing the whole thing to rotate up and cause the belt to be loose. So there we go, now we know. So as you guys can see, I've just taken a few panels off the top and that uh, intake pipe off the top just to give us a bit more room when I'm looking at this thermostat. I've just noticed, I can't believe I've not seen this before, what looks like a really lovely bodgy repair to our inlet here. And this looks like some kind of a chemical metal stuff that's been applied um, to stop a leak, which is less than ideal. So I did get that aluminium intake from Anton to replace this with. But I was told by some more experienced P38 owners that that won't actually bolt onto this engine. It's, uh, it's a different bolt pattern, um, which is a bit shit because we're going to have to replace this probably or see if we can try and repair it properly. But yeah, basically, it looks like someone in the past has done a bit of a dodgy repair there. So this heater pipe has to come off in order to access the um, thermostat housing down the front. So that's why I'm doing this at the moment. So hopefully releasing this pipe will give me enough space just to get onto those three little 10mm bolts to hold on this thermostat housing. So let's give that a go. So with that EGR pipe loosened and the uh, coolant pipe out of the way, I actually get onto the bolts for the thermostat housing. Get those guys out. There we go. One very crusty and old looking, whoa! Thermostat housing with uh, water still in it. Now that does not look good. I'm hoping the new thermostat came with a seal because this looks really ropey. And it's had loads of silicon around there in the past to try and seal it by the looks of that. But that does not look good, does it? So, new thermostat with a nice new seal. Um, I did just test this in a cup of boiling water just to make sure it works, which is always a good, good thing to do, even with a brand new one. And then with these, see there's a nice uh, coating of muck in there, I might give that a quick clean before I put it in, but these uh, thermostats have to be aligned a certain way. The uh, little ball, ball valve on top there has to go in a certain place, and then that will compress down that seal nicely once it's done up. So but yeah, I might just give this a quick wipe out while I can. It does beg a belief though that you know the seal would be broken on your thermostat housing when you took it off and you would think that sealant would be a good enough you know replacement for a proper rubber o-ring boggles the mind a bit i think judging by a few of the different repairs that i've seen on this car the previous owner or one of them at least was a bit of a uh, bodge artist uh, which is a bit of a shame it's always nice to get a car that hasn't been owned by that kind of an owner, you know, when everything is as it should be. So it just makes repairs that much easier. Ah uh, well, it's all part of the restoration of this P38. So with that belt all sorted out and the tensioner bolted back in place again, um, all I've got to do now is throw the new radiator in with the new viscous coupling, viscous fan. Put the hoses back up again, throw some coolant back in it. And um, yeah. So I did pick out that chemical metal that was inside this uh, hole inexplicably in the inlet manifold. What it looks like to me is they've cut out one of these uh, these tabs that go between the inlet manifold um, pipes um, and they've also cut this in order to make access for a tool to access something down there. So basically just a bodge job. Um, yeah, there must have been something underneath here, perhaps an injector line or uh, something they needed to access and instead of doing the job properly and taking this off they cut a hole in it and ruined this inlet manifold so there you go thanks whoever did that so we're gonna have to get another inlet manifold as i said another plastic one um, as the metal ones won't fit on this type of engine but that's a job for another day so anyway let's crack on so this is a new um oem fan and viscous coupling we're going to be putting on it's a febby bellstein one not the most expensive genuine land rover but not the cheapest either 
And then the radiator I got is one that's recommended on all these um, Land Rover and Range Rover forums. And it is one by NRF. You guys will see why it's recommended. So as you guys can see, it's a plastic header tank radiator, which is standard for the P38. It's a bit annoying because they do break over time. Um, I've actually had one on my previous P38 split at the top here when I was off-roading it. Um, not ideal. Um, but yeah, I'll compare this to the one that I've just taken off. You guys will see why it's recommended. This is the old radiator. Obviously a bit clogged up, a bit nasty. If we turn them sideways, you guys will see the difference. This is the new one with a two and a half inch core. And this one is more like a one and a half inch core. So this you know, basically just has a lot more cooling capacity than this one, which is always good. Definitely needed in this boiling Irish weather. But yeah, so nice radiator, nice quality. Not the cheapest, but again, not the most expensive either. I hope I got it the right way around. It's a lovely thick radiator for that. Beautiful. I'll put all the part numbers that I'm using in the description for you guys. This was another auto dock bargain. There we go. Is that mounted? This truck could actually do with new radiator side mounts, like the main big bolts that uh, mount the whole radiator pack. That's why it moves around a little bit. But does actually help with getting the uh, the next part installed, which is the fan and fan cowl. So yeah, no name one come off. That I've just taken off. I'm pretty sure this would be like a, a brick part or a similar like that, not non-branded one. Um, and I don't blame them for putting one of those on because unlike the V8 P38, the Vicious fans for these BMW engines are actually really expensive and hard to come by. So we'll throw this one on. It should be good for a long time. and get this fan located on the thread. That's the radiator back in again. New, new viscous fan is on there, lovely. Fan cowl's back in again. Um, so almost back to where we started now. I'm just gonna, um, whilst I've got this shroud off the top, replace this old hose here, because this uh, nice new gates one will be a big improvement. So we'll try and get that out. So there we go, new radiator, two new hoses. I think we replaced this one last time we were working on it. A new viscous fan in there, new belt, and the tensioner is now attached to the engine as it should be. So that should be a pretty good start. I'm gonna leave this top cover off um, just for now because I know we're gonna have to get to this intake manifold much sooner rather than later. So we're gonna leave that off, but I'm gonna put the um, crossover pipe back on again for the inlet. And then that should see us pretty much done. Turbo in a cooler. Very proudly stated there. Which is kind of surprising for such a low power engine. I'm just going to put this all back on very loosely because it is ultimately going to have to all come back off again very soon.
So hopefully you guys got to hear the difference here, but that rush, that whooshing noise that the viscous fan was making before whenever I revved it has gone now. So that new viscous fan is loose as it should be because the engine's still cool. And all we get is that beautiful six cylinder BMW tail note, which is made a bit louder actually because the exhaust is kind of right in half. But yeah, anyway, that's a really good improvement. Happy days. And so, on that surprisingly tuneful exhaust note, we're going to end the video there. As much as I'd love to take the P38 for a spin up the road right now to test the cooling system out properly, she's still leaking an alarming amount of brake fluid, and that ventilated intake manifold that we found earlier today would definitely be suboptimal for performance. Oh well, there's plenty still to do. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, make sure you hit that like button to tell the YouTube algorithm gods to send more viewers this way, which will really help the channel out, and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss out on my future episodes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time on Sam's Marine Machine.